Hey, it's Sarah with House Copper. I'm going to show you today how I remove, um, I should probably, hmm, um, remove rivets, uh, scum around rivets. So like, I know a lot of you ask for tinning videos and I'm happy to show because, you know, share the love. The more copper cookware there is in the world, you know, yay. So please feel free to home tin if you feel up to it. Um, and I'm happy to answer questions. Um, but the big thing to, to realize is about 80% of the, the retinning process, whether you're doing it outside or in the garage like me or in a nice shop, um, is the prep. And, um, and, and so, I mean, it's great to go over the fire and show how that is, and that's kind of like practice makes perfect. The more you do it, um, the easier you get the touch for it. But the, the, the cleaning and the pr preparation is the, a huge part of actually success over the fire. And, um, and so like today I have, I don't know, 12 pieces that I'm in various stages of cleaning in order for them to go over the fire in a few hours. Um, but, um, and I have little kids, so I don't have giant vats of different acids and bases and solutions for um, real hardcore removal. Um, I wish I did, I would love that, it would make my life easier. Um, I have some buckets that I use of different um, caustic acids or lye um, and muriatic acids, but um, even after that, there is usually some um, mechanical removal. Um, I, you know, I can soak it and I can use wire brushes, but, um, but if you don't have acids or bases in your garage and you are um, up for investing in uh, small hand tools or you have small hand tools, this is how you can use them. So here is a skillet I got. It came to me mostly uh, copper, actually. I didn't have to do much cleaning. I do have some spots I've been removing, as you can see, that I didn't like the oxidation. But do you see around the rivets how much gunk and grime that is? I've done some removal in the bead blaster already, but again, not everybody has a bead blaster at home. And, um, and I've had it soaking in caustic acid, which got um, a fair amount off, especially on the outside. But I'm gonna show you how I um, do a removal around the rivets, which takes a few seconds and it's mechanical, but it doesn't actually remove anything other than the gunk. Um, and it's pretty easy. So here we go. Sorry, you can't drink booze in the shop, but you can drink coffee. All right, so let's see if I can do this. This is the tip I use in my Dremel. I'm trying to get it to focus, maybe over here. Um, it is not very abrasive. Um, it's a diamond tip, um, but it's, it's, um, it doesn't remove a lot of metal. It's actually like a really fine, uh, it feels like sandpaper, um, but it's got a really tiny tip, which gets in to your thing. I also, I don't know if you can see my setup, but I use the Dremel motor, but then I hook it up to a foot pedal so that I can just hit the foot pedal one time and I don't have to hold it down, which kind of is like one last body part I need to remember. And um, I'm gonna just show you how I do this. Let's see if I can show you. These rivets look to be aluminum, which is going to be a problem for two reasons. Yeah, damn. I don't know, can you see? I'm no good at this. I have no one to video this. Damn. Uh, 
let's see. This is the ribbon I cleaned, which was worse than before. Or <laughs> better than it was before. Then I take a wire brush. Because honestly, the tin will not take around this rivet unless you remove that grime. There will remain black. I mean, it literally won't. It really won't adhere. And you'll get that crappy black around the rivets and the tin will break off right away. Um, so you really, this is like the hardest part of prepping. It takes the longest on every single pot. So that was just a, like a wire brush, like a cheapo, like you can buy a ton on, ton on Amazon. So there's the rivet. Can you see it really well? I'm trying to, this sucks. I need like a videographer. But it's, it's actually pretty clean now. I know it doesn't necessarily look like that, but I... I feel a lot better about it compared to the other two. Um, so a few things actually about these rivets, while I'm on rivets, um, is that, um, so these are aluminum rivets. Um, people use them when they're manufacturing because they're cheaper than copper rivets, but they're just as soft. Um, they're non-ferrous and they, they have a pretty good, um, you know, compared to like a stainless, they have a good um, coefficient of thermal expansion. So you're dealing with a metal that's going to um, handle the heat really well when you're cooking in this. The problem is um, tin, um, tin doesn't like adhering to aluminum as well as a copper rivet or even a stainless rivet. Um, and part of that is because... Um, at least where copper and aluminum are concerned, you almost need to like combine the two in a vacuum because once, um, from my understanding of all the reading I've done, and I could always be wrong, so please correct me if I'm wrong, but um, from what I understand, from what I've read, is that the minute aluminum um, gets in, in touch with, with the air, it forms a film of oxide on the aluminum, aluminum oxide, whatever that is, and um, and, and so um, it, it, it kind of, it, even though it's non-ferrous, it doesn't bond to other metals very well because of that. So um, you can, you know, I think that's why there's not a lot of aluminum lined co copper cookware, you know, aluminum's just aluminum because um, it, it, you know, can, you can kind of mechanically put them next to other things, but they don't bond on a molecular level because of that. So you have to like do it in a, if you wanted to bond the two metals, you'd have to do it in like a oxygen free vacuum, um, which who has that in their garage? I don't. So I'm doing this. Um, oh, and the other thing, if you're doing this yourself and you have a piece of cookware that has aluminum rivets, if you stick it in muriatic acid, uh, it's gonna affect those aluminum rivets. It's gonna kind of crust them and it's gonna make them kind of gnarly and gross. Um, so you might not wanna do that if you believe you have aluminum rivets. Um, and uh, so I don't, it's been a while since I've had aluminum rivets in the shop. Um, I can't remember how they take tin. If, I think they do a little bit, but it's not great. So anyway, there you go. There's some rivet cleaning for you. There's some uh, tinning prep for you. And uh, thank you for watching. As always, discussion and conversation is absolutely um, encouraged on here. So, okay, thank you for watching.